Hello everyone and welcome back to Imperator Rome. I'm Lord Formand here with a guide on how to play the Antigonids. So of course this is the strongest of the successor kingdoms, arguably. Um, less population than the Seleucids, but arguably much stronger. Um, despite owning less land, <laughs> it's kind of interesting. Um, I'm not going to go into the history of these guys, but basically you are you get two generations of people with the um, heirs of Alexander or Alexander's legacy uh, CB, which allows this nation to conquer pretty much most of Alexander's kingdom within their first two rulers' lifetime. However, the key thing is your first starting ruler is very old. Um, right now he is full health and he'll get events to try and keep him that way, but he is 78 years old. And he will start declining. And when he declines, unless you have enacted this decision down here, secure their position, um, the empire will splinter on his death and get divided among the other successors that remain. The, luckily, you own all but one needed province for this um, decision. The one you do not own is currently tucked away in Greece here and is owned by Macedon. So, one of the first goals of this kingdom is to get that. But let's quickly run through other stuff. Um, you have a massive amount of levies that you can raise at the start of the game. You're definitely um, one of the strongest successors in that manner. Um, you've got a large amount of different provinces and regions, so you can raise them. Uh, you start out with, obviously, a legion, which is quite useful. Um, Thankfully, you, could, you can look at the levy as map mode now, which is quite useful. Um, you start out with a legion that you can get up to 22 troops. I recommend you try and do that as soon as possible. Um, the legion is currently sitting in Greece, which is great because you want to basically beeline to get the settlement as soon as you can to prevent your empire from collapsing. Uh, there are several events to um, consider as the Antigonids, um, some of which have to do with your missions, some of which don't. Um, first off, you start out with this mission, Antigonus' uh, vision. Uh, and there's one you can do immediately, secure Eastern Capital. Don't take this immediately, um, unless you're not going to attack uh, Macedon. Um, because as once you take this and you start going to uh, war, with the other successors, you'll get a continual event asking you to basically cancel it and save your money. Um, using the money at the beginning is, um, you're better off honestly hiring mercenaries with it um, to help you fight your wars rather than try and do this mission. On the other hand, if you do that mission, then you can get an event where you can fortify your borders against one of the other successors. Um, there's a lot of them, but the big ones you want to get here is you want to get um, Demetrius's playground, which is take this settlement. It'll give you morale and siege ability, which is very useful. Um, and then if you go down here, you will get um, reiterate the Tyre proclamation, which will give you claims on all other territories in Greece or subjects owned by the other successors. And places like Athens will get overlord to your successors. And then you can continue down here. If you kick them all out, a lot of the Greek people will like you. Um, which is quite useful. But the big thing is securing your lands for that first war. So you want to raise your legions, legion to full here. Get them ready to invade. Thankfully, as the Antigonids, you have quite a few subjects which will fight the vast majority of your war for you. Um, you just really need to focus on taking out armies and going for surgical strikes. The best part is you have a clear march route to Corinth. Um, Corinthos. Um, so once you build up your levy, I advise you station it right here in Megara, and then you can simply march in and take that settlement. It has a fort, but with the legacy of Alexander CB, you will simply be able to take it, flip it, and then you can do your decision to secure the, your position. Um, once you've done that, you can start to really think about expanding. You'll be at war with Macedon. Um, so it's usually worth finishing them off. They can't actually resist your legion led by your heir. Uh, he's a genius level general. If you max out his le legion 
and you use the levy, obviously you get here, plus your city states, you can overrun and take all of Macedon in a single war, which is amazing. Um, if you want to speed it up, you can attack Thrace as well. Um, you do have military access through this and all your subjects here will help. Thrace falls relatively quickly. Um, whether or not you want to actually go to all the effort of stomping them out going up here, it's up to you. Uh, it's going to give you a lot more AE to do so. Um, they have a handful of subjects here. Um, they're usually not that hard to beat. Most of them are tributary states, so they won't be involved in the war. Um, but Thrace will be able to march through them, um, which means getting up here can be a bit of a pain. Um, it's usually worth wiping out Macedon and Thrace as soon as you can. That lowers the number of successors to three, um, of which you will definitely be the strongest. No, more importantly, it will give you a core of Macedonian culture um, in Macedonia and Thrace area, rather than having to try and keep Aramaic, Phoenician, Phrygian, and all these other cultures happy, because they are not. Um, you do not start with... Um, you don't really don't start with any of your ruling population a large number of it. You only have a hundred out of your entire land. Uh, Aramaic and Phrygian, thankfully, are already um, citizens. And some decisions have been passed out to increase happiness. Might be worth considering at some point. Don't do it immediately. You want the stability. It might be worth tossing out some rights of intermarriage and rights to inheritance to some of these minor nations you have here to keep them more loyal. Um, if you succeed in this mission, um, oh, sorry, if you succeed in the decision, sorry, which shouldn't be that hard, you should be able to do it, you'll get provincial loyalty and state religion happiness. Combined with starting that mission tree, you also get discipline and tax. You should be very wealthy and relatively stable for the first 20 or so years in game, um, even after your starting ruler dies, at which point... Um, then the struggle becomes keeping your land stable. Um, so definitely conquer as much as you can prior to that, because then you'll be fighting several revolts. Um, it's much easier to conquer the land early while you have that CB rather than not. Uh, you also have the heritage of your starting ruler. Fort defense is lower, which means defending for you is quite difficult. However, conquering is much easier, and you've got some extra diplomatic reputation that will help with both the AE and making um, alliances and making people like you. You also start off with the bloodline of your starting ruler, um, which does do an aggressive ruler reduction and fort defense. Interestingly enough, uh, it kind of counteracts the fort defense penalty that you start with. So don't think either way is a disadvantage or an advantage. It basically just cancels it self out unless you lose the bloodline in which case you suffer defensive penalties so try not to do that in terms of laws um you're going to want to probably stay with your starting laws for a while at some point you may want to flip to this law um, so that if you don't have any male heirs that at least females can inherit uh, but by and large you want males to inherit so you can keep the bloodline as long as possible and you want to beeline to getting conversion policies um, pretty quickly um, Religious conversion is definitely super strong on these guys because most of your religion is most of your lands are not Hellenic. You're 26, but the rest, <laughs> the other 74 or so percent is not Hellenic, and they will express their displeasure pretty soon. Uh, you're gonna want to fl flip your deity of economy probably to Hermes for the commerce income, which is still super strong. Uh, if they do patch that eventually, it's probably worth fl flipping to someone like, um, or maybe Hades here for the build cost and tax. Uh, if you don't want to stay Hellenic, you can kind of flip to these guys, which give tax and war exhaustion. But then again, you're going to make your Hellenic people unhappy and conversion will be harder. You do start with a Sibylline deity of fertility. I do recommend you switch away from this one um, reasonably soon. Um, probably once you get to the conversion laws, prior to that, it's going to keep that region of your lands with that religion happier. So it might be worth keeping until then. But in the long run, you probably want to switch it to uh, Demeter here, uh, or Demeter, depending how you say it, and get that population growth going there. Um, most of the other stuff for the fertility deities aren't very useful, although Pan does have a specific point to it if you're going to invade the Sosids in the Maura. Um, it does help a lot with attrition. Uh, other than that, your Heracles 
starting Deity of War is pretty useful for the unintegrated culture happiness. Keep your lands happier. Um, you can, of course, flip that around if you wanted to go with Apollo, because um, he gives plus four integrated culture happiness, which basically means you can have two more integrated cultures in your lands, which can help with stability if you're going for that. Okay, so we've basically dealt with your deities. Uh, your starting move, which should be invade Macedon, is basically as soon as you can, um, and then probably Thrace. But the question becomes, how do you stop the Seleucids and Egypt? Because both of them will tend to attack you if you invade Macedon. There's events and other stuff that can fire. So the easiest way to do it, I have found, and this is with a little bit of experimentation. Um, I've done about four test runs. The, one of these easiest starting ones is to go down here and build a fort. Um, level up both of these forts, or level uh, level up this fort probably twice, so it's level three. Consider building, oops, consider building a fort up in here, um, level three fort as well. Uh, basically, your goal with Egypt is to white piece them at the initial war. If they attack you while you're invading Thrace and Macedon, you really are probably not going to be able to drive them back. Um, it's up to you, but I found the easiest way is to have good forts and then white piece them before they actually get really any um, growth. I don't know if it was a fluke in my game. I haven't tested it fully, but once I did secure the Antigoned position, it seemed like Egypt did not declare war with the, um, the Alexander CB. It seemed like they declared a normal war, which made obviously a white piece easier. If you're concerned about that, my trick um that i use that i know how to do um is to hire a merc army in um greece probably these ones uh due to the most recent patch be aware that you can only hire three maximum mercenary armies at the beginning that does go up if you become a great power um it's quite quite useful if you can get up to another one uh, you're gonna have plenty of wealth from tributaries and conquests so you should be able to forward two, three Merc armies. Uh, I recommend hiring a Merc army here. Together with your Legion and your Levy in Greece, you can easily conquer this region and then move on to this region. And then the other option is what I recommend is pulling most of your levies down to either the Greek or the Seleucid border, depending on who you're fighting. Pick up the higher um, number Merc armies down here. Um, they are expensive. You can afford up to two of them at the start. That will go up as you conquer more stuff and use them in the wars rather than your levies um, because you're going to be fighting um, two legions. Uh, both the Seleucids in Egypt have legions and to beat them and any levies they send, the mercs are going to do much better than your levies yourself. Um, however, if you pull all of these down here, you've got 34,000 troops, which is not shabby. Um, if you reinforce any of the borders down here and tie up the Seleucids so that they can't just overrun this whole area using their CB, uh, you can easily hold them at your borders until you've subdued this region. You want to subdue this region as fast as possible, then rush your legions over. If you're still in a legacy war, you can easily overrun them. Uh, your legion led by Demetrius is much stronger than basically any other legion that they can deploy at the start of the game. Um, and eventually they will die. Demetrius will become your leader. Uh, you will still have the CB to do conquests for his lifetime, um, which makes conquering these regions pretty easy. I recommend if you're to conquer these areas, you snipe the specific regions you want. You don't take all of Egypt. You don't take all the Seleucids in one more. If you're worried about A, don't do it. You want to eliminate both Macedon and Thrace or, you know, force them to, you know, a tiny island or something. Um, but in terms of Egypt and the Seleucids, they have a ton of non-Macedonian population. Um, more importantly, they also have a ton of non-Hellenic population. Your conquests up here... <coughs> excuse me. Uh, your conquests up there, you're going to be uh, conquering both Hellenic and Macedonian population, which means the unrest in those territories is going to be much lower than invading Egypt or the Babylonian area. Um, I recommend you take the Nile Delta from Egypt. Uh, let's see if I can pull up re uh, not regions. Uh, well, actually, regions work. If you conquer all of Lower Egypt from Egypt, um, uh, that would not be a bad decision. You really don't need these provinces down here. 
at the start. So actually, let's go with this. Take the central delta, the eastern delta, the western delta, and probably Memphis. Leave the rest for another war. It's pretty easy to conquer them once they've lost their major population centers. In terms of invading the Seleucids, take Mesopotamia here if you can. Uh, specifically take Babylon and this area through here, Sumer, uh, Sitasin, and this area. You want this. This is the vast majority of their population. And almost more importantly for you, it's the key for both the Egyptians and the Seleucids um, Macedonian populations, which means they will become much more unstable, prone to revolt. Um, they're going to be tied up with internal issues for a good portion of the rest of the game. Don't forget that you can, in fact, bribe governors if the loyalty fall of their provinces fall below 50, and you can get their loyalty below 40. Um, you have to make friends first, and then you can inspire disloyalty. If inspired disloyalty gets them below 40, you can then entice them. Don't wait any time at all. Once you get them below 40, the AI will immediately bribe them and get them above it, or will reassign them. Um, but then you can entice governors. It's a great way to expand into the successors without necessarily declaring war. You cannot bribe away areas ruled by their kings. So you can't bribe away the central delta for Egypt, Babylon here, but you can bribe away areas up here in northern Mesopotamia. Um, basically bribing away Macedon is impossible or Thrace. Uh, outside of that, for innovations, let's quick go down that. So, uh, due to the recent patch, some things have changed. Uh, I'll probably do a separate video on them, but you want to definitely beeline for due process, accepted rights. Actually, I'll just do it here so you can see. You really want to do this to get to here, at minimum. Um, you can not go down here to conversion laws, but I uh, deeply recommend it. It uses up almost all your starting innovations. Um, but now you can do, in terms of laws, you can flip to religious conversion and you want to do that basically as soon as you can. Um, it'll really help increasing your religious unity, converting a lot of these populations to your religion. Uh, in terms of the remaining ones, uh, it depends if you want to go for more stability or more conquests. If you're concerned about stability and if you're going to conquer all the lands, um, in one or two wars, like take all of Egypt, all the Seleucids and stuff, you, stability is going to be king, um, in which case I recommend you do these two here, huge um, and reduce governorship, get the additional provincial loyalty, due to doing your decision of plus 0.05 uh, provincial loyalty, which will help a ton in keeping your land stable for 20 or 30 years. And then if you get another um, innovation, from like a uh, event, one of these guys happens to be a good researcher. You get that lucky event. Uh, tossing it down here into the Libertini um, is not a bad decision either for the slave happiness. Um, that is basically the best way to get um, happiness. In the long run, you want to get down here to ban witchcraft, assemblies, and form formulaic worship. Um, that will make a big difference in terms of keeping your... Um, converting your lands, keeping them stable. If you're going to use mercs, it might be worth taking a detour here to get auxiliary recruitment, additional levies, manpower, and plus one maximum merc armies. Um, if you're not prone to wanting to use levies all the time and you don't really can't, but well, you can't really raise any massive legions early on due to cultures and lack of citizens and nobles, it might be worth taking a detour here. If you're going for formulaic worship, it's only three out of the way. And these army morale recoveries is very worth innovations. Um, the more I play the game, the more I realize this is particularly key. It it allows you to raise your mercs faster. Um, it takes them less time to get up for full morale. If you lose any battles, your armies will recover faster. Um, it's very strong. Outside of that, um, if you're going to do conquest, but you're not entirely worried about stability, going down oratory here, snagging your way down to gradual economic integration to get the grand theater building, um, which will allow you to culture convert. And in general, it will also help um, reduce your AE. You can keep going down that. The goal at the end, of course, is imperial challenge, which allows you to take land in a war and you know, immediately take it for your own rather than having to take it in a peace deal. Um, 
However, it's not worth beelining to it as the Antigonids because the only great power you're going to really have to, major power you're going to have to worry about at the end is the Maura. And you've got a lot of time until you'll be stable enough to invade them unless you absolutely rush it. Um, so it's up to you. I recommend you snag legal patronage here, get additional loyalty. Oddly enough, I found that the court of the Antigonids, most people seem to stay loyal, um, unlike the other successors, which is really bizarre. But I've done three or four games and haven't had much um, loyalty issues. Part of that might have been using mercs, because that increases the power base issues, and mercs are always loyal, which is amazing. So probably worth snagging legal patronage. Outside of that, um, you could start down the commerce side of the civic tree, get some more money. If you're, again, super concerned about stability, you can go down this way and head towards Petition of Minorities. It's really up to you if you go to the right path or the le the central path here. Um, I, I don't really have an opinion which are better. See, this unlocks some stuff like promotions and additional political influence, which can be useful. But down here, you can also take a detour and get untreated cultural happiness as well. But if you go this way, you can also go down this tree. So it's really up to you. Honestly, I'd probably go down the right tree offhand. Um, you want to get as much... Uh, unintegrated culture happiness as possible if you want to stay stable. If you don't care about stability, you just use mercs to crush it. Don't bother going down here. In terms of the martial trees, um, due to the recent patch that nerfs the raising of a levy, waiting four months and disbanding it for huge military experience, you now have to go eight months and you'll incur too much of war exhaustion. Uh, the strategy of starting grabbing starting experience is much weaker. Uh, it can still be worth doing, but as the Antigonids, you're not going to have a lot of trouble with conquests and traditions in the early game, because you're going to basically be constantly at war generating traditions, so you won't be able to do the peaceful raise, the peaceful disband. You're going to be raising the troops, using them, and then disbanding them at the end of the war to try and control your war exhaustion. Um, but when you do, um, it could be worth grabbing the experience ones so you can race through your innovation, your tradition tree. In terms of tradition, uh, you've got a lot of them. Sadly, there's none that give you uh, innovations, which is very frustrating as a Greek Hellenic um, country. You've got a lot of different options. It's probably worth snagging at least Arms for Hire, um, Veterans of the Great Campaign. And ideally, if you're going to use Mercs, you want to get down here to Deep Coffers reasonably quickly so that merc armies are cheaper um bremer merc armies are not as good as lesions but you get them earlier and you can get more of them plus they only really require money to maintain which can help you do have to embrace embrace a greco persian culture group but you already start it start with phrygian embraced or sorry integrated so you can very quickly uh, unlock that but it is buried deep down there for starting ones, I'd probably recommend the Arms for Hire one, gets you some more Freemen, then Modernized Flanax, then probably either grab City State Fortifications to increase the amount of forts you can have, and Defense, or jump over here to the Greek Tradition Snag, Veterans of the Great Campaign, which will help generate more traditions, and then Siegecraft here, so you can siege forts, the Sarissa for Infantry Morale, Silver Shields for Offense. And then if you're having trouble with culture conversion, military colonies is very strong on armies because then you can get a stable base of your culture growing inlands. Uh, outside of conquering the successors, I recommend you kind of ignore the area of Armenia and North for some time. Uh, you really want to use the starting CB if you have heirs of Alexander to conquer all this area. If you don't, have that DLC, it's still worth invading this area, and then probably going after Egypt before the Seleucids, who are going to be in wars with the Maura on and off. Um, the Seleucids are also much stronger than Egypt uh, early on. Uh, anything else that's unique about these guys? You get a lot of events, you get some you, the uh, successor missions as you go on. Your starting mission takes quite a while to finish. If you do, though, you get to replace the Hellenic culture deity Zeus 
with uh, your starting ruler, which is pretty cool. Uh, be aware, though, you have to get to 600 prestige first, which can take some time. Um, it's kind of frustrating to get there and realize you still are, you know, 100 prestige away, and it's going to take time. Um, you do have a mission down here to conquer or uh, to conquer roads. It's a very viable strategy also to go down the oratory tree, snag the opinion, the max improve opinion maximum, and uh, just judatory and client state all the remaining Greeks. They will like you due to like your missions. If you do the tire proclamation, they will gain, you know, some of these, they'll gain opinions of you. And uh, it's pretty easy to just simply subject all of Greek, all the Greek lands outside of the successors. They'll help supply troops in wars. There's no real reason to, you know, invade Crete. That'll condense into one or two countries that you can simply make a feudatory and then annex at a later date. Uh, in terms of reforming Alexander's empire, since that's what most of you are going to go for, uh, you start out with owning quite a few of the needed ones. Uh, I think you start out with the most. Your invasion of Greece will pick you up two or three of the needed ones. If you take on Thrace, that'll get you all the ones you need in the west. Your invasion of Egypt, the only one you got to be aware of is you need this province over here, Ammonion. Probably said that wrong. Um, and then land up here, which you should get in your first war. In terms of the Seleucids, you basically want to conquer them all anyway. And then you do have to invade the Maura for a land over here. Uh, I think it's Tax Taxilla. And then you also need... Um, Alexandro Lehman over here to reform it. You can do this in the first two starting rulers lifetime if you go really hard for it. If you're going to commit to it, commit to it because completing the Alexander's Empire will give you a massive amount of stability basically. Your freemen will like you, you'll have a better army, better diplomatic rotation, but you also get plus six unintegrated culture group happiness which is amazing. Um, Plus there's missions and stuff you can do there. If you go for it, go for it quickly. Otherwise, conquer Northern Egypt, Thrace, Macedon, and the Babylon Babylonia region. And then wait, restabilize, convert, and then finish them off. If you take the Delta and Babylon, both all the successors will be much weaker than you. And you can pick them off at your leisure. You'll also be so large that Rome basically will ignore you. I've had them declare war. I built forts in the Macedonian mountains and they never got past it. So I think that's it for a guide to the Antigonids. Um, just be aware that you probably do want to switch your diplomatic stats to the aggressive Bellicos one so that your AE is lower and your war score cost is easier. Um, and then obviously flip to appeasing when the time comes for peace to lower your aggressive expansion. You'll probably get to 80 or so aggressive expansion in the first two rulers. Your war exhaustion should cap at 20. Um, don't expect to have any research coming in for some time. Uh, use your starting money to hire mercs. If you want to start to get some research going, um, build a grand temple in your capital, build some academies, um, and then once you conquer Macedon and Thrace, build lots of academies there, and you'll get off to a pretty good start. Obviously, turn your governor's policies towards harsh treatment if the provincial loyalty gets low. Activate Zeus as much as you can for the reduced aggressive expansion, unless you max out on it, in which case go with Heracles and get the discipline. Anyway, that's it for a guide on the Antigonids. It's very easy. Um, it says very hard, but if you can subdue this area and prevent the collapse of the kingdom, you can by and large white piece the Seleucids in Egypt, or else your starting levies and some mercs can take them on. You don't have to give up land. You don't have to. Uh, you don't have to do a lot of stuff. It's pretty easy. Be aware that Thrace can get an event to kill your starting ruler, but I've never seen the AI pull it off. So anyway, that's it. Thank you guys all for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this guide. I have a couple more to do. And uh, I'll probably be doing another Imperator Rome series in the next day or two. So thank you guys all for watching. Bye for now.